Wasn't it wonderful to see the, the kids down on the instruments down here? Could you hear them? It was great. And, and, and the wonderful kids down there on the instruments? And, and, and the kids down here? It was, it was so good. I love seeing, I love seeing young people um, engage uh, in, in worship. And, and it reminds me, like, when I see my kids singing, like, Br- Brady's favorite song is um, Praise. And he sings it at the top of his lungs. And I've got some hilarious video, video clips, um, which I'm not going to share um, with you, but, but they're so funny. And he loves singing and dancing along. In fact, my kids, every night, nearly every night, they have a dance party um, in Lexi's room. Lexi's got a night light and it changes lots of different colors. And so they, um, they have a little dance party. And Brady, Brady is a very good break dancer for his age. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, the Olympics will continue to have break dancing in there. Um, we could maybe call him Braygun, and he will, uh, he will be able to score more than the poor Australian girl did this year. But Lexi, Lexi is like the ultimate performer. Uh, she, she grabs her microphone, she sings, she dances, she does the costume changes. Uh, very full on, very full on for um, getting ready for bed. But, <laughs> but Lexi also, she, I, I think she's like... She's got this costume change idea because we probably pay a little bit too much of Taylor Swift's um, Eras Tour a video at home, which is mostly my fault, but a little bit her mum's... No, mostly her mum's fault, but a little bit my... I've just sold myself out, haven't I? But she loves it. So, so Lexi watches this, um, this concert, and, and, sh- and, and, and Taylor Swift, she changes costumes 16 times in a three-hour concert. And as I was getting ready for this week's sermon, I thought, that's the sort of, that's the sort of production value that we need here. <laughs> we need in a sermon, we need me doing 16 different costume changes, 16 different scene changes. Um, and, and maybe it's good that Gary was away this week because that means that I'm in charge of the budget. <laughs> but instead of spending money, I just used AI and came up with 16, uh, 16, six different backdrops. So we're just gonna tell a story today. So maybe if you like stories, just shut your eyes. Um, although I did make backdrops and then you won't see them. But Shut your eyes, listen along. This is what we're going to do. We are going to pick up uh, in Revelation from where Gary finished with us. Revelation 5. And I saw a strong angel who shouted with a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals on the scroll and open it? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll and read it. Then I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy. The young boy came bounding into his parents' sleeping quarters that morning. Wake up, Dad! Wake up! Wake up! The dad didn't need to wake up. He'd been up all night worrying about what was to come. Dad! Dad, are we going? Are we going? He got out of his bed, looked over at his wife, whose eyes were still red. From crying all night. Yes, son, we're going. And as he said that, he he wondered, what was God thinking? The words played over and over in his head that morning as they had all night. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love so much, And go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. What was the point? Abraham had waited 100 years to be a father. 100 years of waiting, of longing to know what it was to have a child. And God had promised him. And God had delivered And now God was taking away what was going on. Abraham got up. He made preparations for the journey. He watched his son so full of life, so full of excitement for this trip. If only he knew. Abraham settled up the donkey. He took two of his servants and he told Isaac it was time to leave. Sarah ran out to hug her son a little bit tighter this morning. Isaac, as young boys tend to do, tried to pull away a little too quickly. But she pulled him in tighter. It wasn't long enough. Ninety years she had waited. 
he can give me a few more seconds. Abraham put the remaining wood on the altar for the, uh, for the altar on the donkey's back, and he set off. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told the servants. The boy and I will go a little further. We will worship there, and then we will be right back. Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering across Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham. Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son, Abraham answered. And they both walked in together. When they arrived at the place that God had told him to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And as Abraham went to sacrifice his only son, the son he loved so much, the angel of the Lord called down to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. John continued to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll and read it. But one of the elders said to him, Stop weeping. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to David's throne. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin. She was engaged to marry a man named Joseph from the family of David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Greetings. The Lord has blessed you and is with you. But Mary was very startled by the angel and what the angel had said and wondered what this greeting might mean. The angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary. God has shown you his grace. Listen, you will become pregnant and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. The Lord will give him the throne of King David, his ancestor. While they were in Bethlehem, the time came for Mary to have the baby, and she gave birth to her son, and they named him Jesus. When the time came for Mary and Joseph to do what the law of Moses taught about being made pure, they took Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male will be given to the Lord. Sometime after, John the baptizer saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one I was talking about when I said, A man is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. I did not recognize him as the Messiah, but I have been baptizing with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John testified, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him. I didn't know he was the one, but when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, the one on whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus, so I testify that he is the chosen one of God. The following day, John was standing again with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, Look, there is the Lamb of God. Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And he said, Sit here a while. I will go over there to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. 
stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further and bowed his head to the ground, praying, Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. Then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went a third time to pray, saying the same things again. Then he came to his disciples and said, Go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But look, the time has come. The Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. The soldiers took Jesus into the courtyard of the governor's headquarters and called out the entire regiment. They dressed him in a purple robe and they wove thorn branches into a crown and put it on his head. Then they saluted him and taunted him, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him on the head with a reed stick, spat on him, dropped to their knees in mock worship. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him again. And then they led him away to be crucified. A passerby named Simon, who was from Serene, was coming in from the countryside just then. And the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. And they brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine and drugged him with myrrh, but he refused it. When the soldiers nailed him to the cross, they divided his clothes and threw dice to decide who would get each piece. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. A sign announced the charge against him. It read, the king of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The people shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Ha! Look at you now! They yelled. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well then, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests and teachers of religious law also mocked him. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down from the cross so we can see it and believe him. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished, and to fulfill the scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so the soldiers soaked a sponge in it, put it on a branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head, and he gave up his spirit. But one of the 24 elders said to me, stop weeping. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to David's throne, has won the victory. He is worthy to open the scrolls and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb look as if it had been slaughtered, but it was now standing between the throne and the four living beings and among the 24 elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which represent the sevenfold spirit that God has sent out to every part of the earth. He stepped forward and took the scroll from the right hand of the one sitting on the throne. And when he took the scroll, the four living beings and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp and they had gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song with these words, you are worthy to take the scroll. And break open its seals. For you were slaughtered, and your blood has ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have caused them to become a kingdom of priests for our God, 
and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked again, and I heard the thousands of voices and millions of angels around the throne and of the living beings and the elders, and they sang a mighty chorus. Worthy is the lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea. They sang blessing and honor and glory and power belong to the one sitting on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. And the four elders, the four living beings said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped the lamb. 